I think of them as bright or dark. So for example, green, dark, red, dark, yellow, kind of the one that's in the middle. Blue I always think of as being a light color just because I grew up near the ocean. So I was born blind and at about four months old my family recognized I was blind. For like two years we tried figuring out what is the diagnosis for it. Finally after two years we gave up. We're like okay. My family gave up. They're like he's blind. We know it. God, just do what we have to do. I was eight and a half years old. I was in class and all of a sudden I fainted in class. Like just completely fell to the ground without any warning or anything. And I got rushed to the hospital. They found out I had kidney failure. Did some tests. Found out that it was from the gene mutation CEP290, which is also known as Jabers syndrome. And you know, people that have Jabers have uh, two of four. So blindness and kidney failure is what I got, which I got lucky because the other two possibilities were heart failure or brain damage. And from there, I was on dialysis at 10 years old. At 12, I had my kidney transplant. I actually, Christmas year, like around Christmas of 2012 was when I had my transplant. And then ever since then, I've just been taking medicine for that. I'm usually a lot more independent than most other blind people, which drives people insane because they feel like they always need to help, they always need to do this, they always need to do that for the blind. A lot of other blind people are less stubborn and they'll like be living with people that help them or something like that. I just did not take that option. I was like, I'm just gonna do me. So one of the biggest problems is when walking, people will just come up and like grab my arm to try to help. And that's one of the worst things to do. And I have actually backhanded someone when they've done it. Just go up and ask if the person needs help that's blind. Don't actually go up and like grab the person's arm. It drives us blind people insane. I'm going to start with my Apple Watch, which is how I check if I have notifications. It helps me see if I have notifications, see if I want to pull out my phone and actually read them with voiceover. And then I use voiceover to communicate through text message, through searching for things, email. I use my Braille machine here, which is plugged in so I won't be able to get as good of a view. But So right here down here is the Braille screen. Enter backspace, dots 123, 456, space bar. From there, I can plug in a flash drive up here. That's how I get my stuff to my professors. And I have internet access. I have a word processor, all sorts of stuff. So I use this to walk around. I actually used to do, I used to have vo a very good echolocation before the pandemic, but the masks can't do echolocation with. But I used to be able to walk around without my cane. So I either head out my building on the first floor, head up to the bus stop and head to the J school, or I'll head down to the basement, cross through the parking lot, go to the other bus stop, and head up to Robinson to cross over to either Summerfield or Dole. This school is not great for ADA compliance, to be honest. There's some really big issues. Uh, Braille signs, specifically in my tower, if not making the menus more accessible so I know what there is. Disability Resource Center is not very, ac like they don't, they can help at times, but a lot of the times they do more harm than good. Always be you, don't try to change yourself just so you can get through a class. That just because we're blind, we can do anything that a sighted person can do. We can still live our lives independently, even if sometimes it takes a couple extra steps. So whoever is selling KU, good job on tricking me into thinking there was no humidity in Kansas. 